So now in this video, we come back to the uh, quad two input NOR gate, the 7402 series integrated circuit. So there we have the uh, high speed CMOS version that we looked at in the uh, last video. And uh, so it's missing right there. We're gonna compare it to the uh, low power shot key. So this is not a, uh, a very big test just mostly the power consumption for the most part. So in any case, we have uh, one there, one there. They have the same pin layout. So that's what the 7400 series means. You'll have different letters in there, maybe uh, high speed CMOS, HC, or LS, low power shot key. And uh, those four letters are also in a bunch of other uh, combinations, including by themselves. But uh, low power shot key and high speed CMOS seem to be the uh, two dominant ones right now. So first, we're gonna look at uh, the high-speed CMOS, and that resist resistor is just floating right now. We're gonna look at the power actually. So we're just gonna use this one up here. The output is pin number one. That's where the uh, resistor is. Uh, pin number two right below it is the A input, and then pin number three is the B input. The important thing is that uh, the power is off, so there's no current. There we go. Turn the power on, and uh, this is uh, gonna level down at uh, about eight milliamps at some point. So that resistor is still floating. If I touch it, I, I may give it stray signals or whatnot, but because uh, it's really sensitive. But in any case, there we go. We go up there, 470 ohm resistor. We're only dealing with five volts. That's all the low power shot key can really handle for the most part. So I'm gonna put the long lead of the LED to the resistor, short lead of the LED to that jumper there. And the NOR gate is, uh, is, uh, has a high output unless you get one or two low, I mean high inputs. So the output's high until you get one or uh, two, both of the inputs high, one or the other or both. And so what we're gonna do is uh, take this jumper here and go to the bottom of the switch, which is connected to the positive up there but it's not being pressed right now. So the jumper is floating just like the pin now. It's not connected to anything. And uh, we'll go over there. And so now the LED may only be about half as bright. It's kind of flickering a little bit as I uh, move around. But when I pull down the uh, voltage, so we'll move in a little bit more. I'll take this resistor, go to the negative rail, and then go to input A, the uh, top there and uh, you saw the LED get brighter and so maybe a stray signal kind of doing that. So this is a 10,000 ohm resistor and we'll take this one here. So this uh, integrated circuit does not like floating pins. They like to have a known voltage, negative rail or in this case the uh, positive rail. So there we have it. There's still about the same amount of current when there was no LED as there is when there is an LED. So we press one of the buttons, the LED turns off. So you can see here that uh, that's even lower than when there is uh, than nothing. So just in case you didn't see the last video, that is the truth table. So the output is high as long as both inputs are low. So we got the resistors pulling down. I press a switch or the other switch or both switches that gives us five volts, which is a one. But in uh, any case, that sets the output low to uh, zero volts. And we can also, instead of going to the negative rail, turn this around so that the long lead goes to this jumper that goes to the positive rail. Short lead goes up one row, long lead anode, short lead cathode, and we can come to the resistor over there. So if we prefer, for whatever reason, to go this way, now the uh, LED is on. So the output's still low, but the other side is high. and. Uh, or you could press both. So, any case, main thing was the current. We were looking at at least uh, seven or eight milliamps of current, and it went up to, uh, I think it was like 11 or 12, whatever it was. So, let's go back to the more normal position of having the LED to the negative rail, and we're gonna pluck. Let's turn the, uh, we can pluck the uh, component. I think that's okay. There you can see we got the no current, so. I'm gonna turn that off. That's because none of these were making a connection after we removed the integrated circuit. So now I have the low power shock key. 
and uh, so low power we expect less current because we're dealing with uh, 5 volts and so current is voltage I mean power is uh, voltage times current so we got the low power shocky now when I hit the uh, power button there you can see we only got 3 milliamps even with the LED lit up so I don't know how much it was passing before but uh, maybe it's just not outputting as much but in any case press that button current holds about steady press that button current holds steady press about both current holds steady plus we can look at current if we again turn the LED around so the line leads to the positive rail short lead is up one and we come over there and uh, it looks like it's still hovering about three this isn't a precision uh, it's usually one or two milliamps off but it's close enough we can see here that uh, it's a quite a bit lower amount of current that this integrated circuit needs at uh, at all times so when we're at our maximum current it was about the minimum current we could ever expect from the other one so let's just yank all the components again this is the low power shot key and uh, I bent that resistor I bent the lead so I'm going to try to not damage the board when I take it out but in uh, any case right now these two pins are floating they're not connected to the uh, or they're connected to one side of the switch but the switch is open so now they're not even connected to the switch so that's the integrated circuit by itself about two milliamps of current just to uh, power its internals and uh, there you can see we pluck it we get to no current so we saw if you need to save on current this is definitely the better option so again I only have these from those kits that I, I showed you and they only gave me one so if there's a problem with one of these two where they're behaving unusual I don't know so maybe I'll buy more later we'll see if there's one of these that I really like and buy more I have a bunch of hex inverters and uh, so we can test the one I got from the kit versus the other ones I got on eBay that were a lot cheaper but in any case that's it for this video we're just comparing the power of the other of the two because so far they seem to be working pretty much the same now the uh, high and the low are not uh, definitely 5 volts and 0 volts there's a range of voltages and I think the uh, range is a bit different for the two of them too so there's definitely other differences that uh, I haven't worked on yet but uh, the power consumption seemed like a nice easy video to uh, get all of us started so uh, check out the other videos that I post on the screen make sure you subscribe and uh, click the bell so you see all my videos thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one